Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion, and I'm Bill Stone. While I've got your attention, I'd like to ask that if you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I would appreciate your support via my PayPal tip jar, my subscribe star, my merch stores on Teespring, or a place on my website where you can support me further. And there are links to all of these in my description box. Well, you'll notice that I, if you're on the YouTube side at least, I am coming to you at a wonderful 1080p and 60 frames per second for the very first time. I had occasion to be able to upgrade my recording equipment, and boy, has it really paid off. Hopefully, the modern format will attract more viewers. Of course, now I'm going to have to work on the next format, which will be 4K, if that's possible to do with my equipment now. But in any case, I am very, very happy about this, and I hope that you are too. <sighs> well, since you come looking for this video as a review, I kind of assume that you've already watched Doctor Who Season 12, Episode 3, Orphan 55, but just for safety's sake, I'm going to have to issue myself a... Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. All hands, prepare for incoming spoilers. Yes, it is a spoiler alert, and that is because I am a fandom master, and that means that the fandom is strong with me, and that means that nothing is new, nothing is original, and at worst I figure it out about a half an hour too early. This is neither a boast nor brag. This is sadly where you find yourself after having watched, read, and listened to over a hundred years worth of science fiction. You just can't see the new stuff for the entire century that came before, and you find out that there just isn't that much that's new in the world. <sighs> this episode, Orphan 55, was really nothing more than cringe moments. So, okay, the, the basic thumbnail review of this episode is short and sweet. It was irritatingly stupid and boring. This episode was nothing more than 50 minutes worth of cringe. We started out with a pair of pretty strong episodes this season, but now it's devolved again to Chris Chibnall's usual brand of irritatingly stupid and boring junk. You know, the ratings are dropping already. If they keep dropping, we can expect this to be Chibnall's last season on Doctor Who and Jodie Whittaker's last season as the Doctor, which is too bad, because Jodie Whittaker is really being underutilized. She showed her acting talent in both parts of Spyfall, but unfortunately, Chibnall is leading her down a path to the unemployment line. Get this and get it good, Chris. You've been making crap. You've been making nothing but crap, and this is just another one to throw into the dumpster fire. Find someone who knows something about science and science fiction and do it fast. You've got to know that your neck is on the block by now. So this episode was written by Ed Heim, so it's his fault. Although, you know, to be perfectly honest, I think it was probably Chris Chibnall's idea. It bears his uh, mentioned, uh, you know, crap. Now, it does bear mentioning, of course, um, you know, Heim's record to some extent because he was the writer. And he's done a fair amount of radio drama for the BBC, mostly directing. Is currently under commission as a stage play director for the National Theatre in London. And again, he's mostly just doing directing there, not just directors are important. He's uh, about to write another episode of Doctor Who for this season. Oh, joy. And he was nominated for a BAFTA as a newcomer about 10 years ago. This episode was predictable in every way. I found myself bored the entire time and then irritated. This was essentially 1968's Planet of the Apes with a little bit of Alien, Doctor, and Star Trek's holodeck thrown in and a lot of garbage science thrown in for good measure. There was an absent mom. Okay, what, 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 what the hell is up to that? Plenty of people have absent parents these days. A couple of immediate members of my family had completely absent fathers, and due to geography, I wasn't with my children near as much as I would have liked to have been. But the last I knew, no one in my family was planning to blow up anyone's workplace. 
That made this character, whom I didn't remember the name of, and there wasn't uh, a uh, secondary way of watching this to get, and, and all of the credits for this are not yet put in IMDb or anywhere that I can find. But that character is, is actually a violent psychopath. Ryan's failure to notice this and not go along with her evil plan made his whole relationship with her just completely ridiculous. I mean, are any of this cast planning to cuddle up to the master anytime soon? Because that character is the same thing. Well, she's not on the master's level, don't you know, that's for sure. But blowing up someone's workplace is insane. And then there was the kid who was smarter than his father. This is always stupid. A kid is never smarter. He hasn't the training nor the experience of the adult. If the kid is smarter than the dad, then it means the dad must be a low-grade moron of some kind. It just smacks, by the way, of how Wesley Crusher was written in TNG's first season, and we all know how just how irritating that was. And then there was climate change. Before I talk about this, I want to stress that I am, in fact, a scientist. And it says so on both of my college degrees. I hold both an, uh, an AS and a BS in computer science. And I got this at a time when the science part of it actually mattered. It was not today's IT, which in many ways, to be honest, is implementing what my generation created for 40 years years. The scientific method has been, is, and will always be a key component of the computer science. I employed it on a daily basis for 40 years. It's why I can say with great confidence that what presently passes for climate science doesn't follow the scientific method in any way and is therefore not a science but a religion. Now I have discussed this in length in my video Debunked, climate science is not science, and you can find a link for that in my description box. But that video, by the way, is a BitChute-only video, as YouTube will not allow me to upload it. It is, nevertheless, one of my highest viewed videos over on BitChute. One of the benefits of being on the planet for 55 years, almost, my birthday's in two whole days, is that you gain perspective. And part of this perspective is the ability to identify scientific claptrap when you see it. Let us, if you're not aware, let's just go down a list of doomsday scenarios that occurred in my lifetime that never once came to pass. Now, I was born in 1965, and the first prediction I'm going to talk about is one year later. Now, this is by no means a comprehensive list, as these types of doomsday scenarios have been around for centuries, if not more. So our list begins in 1966, when it was predicted that uh, oil will be gone in 10 years. In 1967, dire famine will occur by 1975. In 1968, overpopulation will cause mass starvation and death. In 1969, everyone will disappear in a cloud of blue steam by 1989. I had to go look this one up because I had no idea what the blue steam reference was even about. Uh, I think it turns out that that was some kind of reference to opposition to nuclear power, I think. In 1970, that was a hell of a year for uh, predictions, for doomsday predictions. They predicted the global natural resources will be totally depleted by the year 2000. They predicted that urban citizens will be required gas masks by 1985. That nitrogen buildup will uh, make all land unusable. That decaying pollution will kill all fish worldwide. That uh, killer bees will kill us all. That there will be an ice age by the year 2000. That Americans will be subject to water rationing by 1974 and subject to food rationing by 1980. In 1971, they predicted that there will be an ice age by 2020 or 2030. In 1972, they predicted an ice age by 2070. And in 1974, space satellites showed for absolute certainty that a new ice age was in the near future. Also, that ozone depletion is a great peril to life. In 1976, the scientific consensus agreed that the planet is cooling and famine is imminent. 
1977, the U.S. Department of Energy said that oil will peak in the 1990s. In 1978, there is no end in sight to the 30-year global cooling trend. In 1980, acid rain will kill all life in lakes, rivers, and streams, and peak oil will be in 2000. In 1988, there will be regional droughts in the 1990s. Temperatures in Washington, D.C. will hit record high, and the Maldives Islands will be underwater by 2018. In 1989, rising sea levels will obliterate nations by 2000, and New York's West Side Highway will be under underwater by 2019. In 1996, they predicted that peak oil will now be in 2020. In 2000, they predicted that children won't know what snow is. In 2020, they predicted that there will be a famine in 10 years. We don't give up eating fish, meat, and dairy products, and the peak oil will be in 2010. In 2004, they predicted that Britain will be like Siberia by 2024, and the polar ice caps will have melted completely. I'm not quite sure how those two things go along. If the ice caps melt, it's getting warmer, but yet Britain's going to be like Siberia, which is very cold. Don't ask me. 2005, they predicted that Manhattan will be completely underwater by 2015. 2006, they predicted that super hurricanes will wreak havoc on all coasts and much inland. In 2008, they predicted that the Arctic will be ice-free by 2013, and also that same year predicted that the Arctic will be ice-free by 2018. In 2009, Prince Charles said that we have 96 months, that is eight years, to save the planet from global warming. And also the UK Prime Minister said that we only have 50 days to save the planet from climate catastrophe, and that the Arctic will be ice-free by 2014. In 2013, it was predicted the Arctic will be ice-free by 2015. In 2014, there are only 500 days, that is 1.4 years, before climate chaos. In 2019, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, always referred to on this show as Red Cortez because it fits, claims that we have 12 years to save the world from climate change. And, of course, I guess now that's only 11 years. And also that year, and continuing into this year, climate cultists used an abused child, Greta Thunberg, to give emotionally ravaged speeches, claiming that it's really going to happen this time. In my near 55 years, precisely none of these predictions has ever come true. Zip, zilch, nada, de rien. They have all been wrong. There is absolutely no reason to worry about modern climate cultists' predictions any more than there was a reason to worry about the various cultists of 1966. What individuals call climate science, again, is no science at all. It does not in any way follow the scientific method and is therefore anything that's not a scientific method it is not a science. It is a religion. And again, I've discussed this in my video, debunking climate science is not science, and there's a link to that in my description box. And again, bit shoot only video because YouTube, for some reason, will not allow me to upload it. So at the end of all this, we have to get a recommendation. Is it any good? Nope, it's complete crap. You may safely give this episode a complete miss. Stream some classic Who instead. I would personally, I would suggest the episode Inferno from the John Pertwee era. Now there, there is a good story. Chris Chibnall, if you're watching, go back and immerse yourself in both classic and modern Who because you're really screwing the pooch. Both you and Jody Whitaker are headed straight for the unemployment line when this season is over, if this thing is any kind of indication. And so that is all I have to say about that. I would love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to respond to you. And that's so thanks for watching. That is all the time we have today for this episode of the highly acclaimed, world-renowned Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone.
Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.